Okay, we're doing a video on the history of Bratnell in Berkshire in the United Kingdom, the town I currently live in. Now, it's first mentioned in 942 AD, uh, and the, at the time, um, you've got Saxon and Danish uh, nobles controlling like an Anglo-Danish kind of kingdom, like King Canoe, Hath Canoe, you know, Ethelred the Unready, those kind of kings. England is not England as we would know it later on under William the Conqueror, and onwards with more stable government and a stable country going forward. So it's first mentioned there, which is actually kind of late if you think about it. Places like Winchester and Canterbury have been going for a lot, lot longer due to the Romans. So I, this is quite late on, considering that we're near the Thames and we're on a, a defensive hill. Very interesting. There are the name Bracknell, as first mentioned, and there is signs of inhabited uh, uh, Bill Hill, um, for example, which is a local hill that has a Bronze Age barrow. So we go back at least three to three to four thousand years in human history, but it's first mentioned as a place name in 942. Um, after 1066 and William the Conqueror and the, and the building of Windsor Castle, it technically is actually part of the New Forest. The New Forest stretched all the way from Windsor Castle straight down to Hampshire via Surrey and Berkshire. Vast royal estate, and there were several of these royal estates, such as Epping Forest, that were, were owned by the royal family at the time, which is very important for the history 500 years later. Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon have a strong link to this area. Henry VIII's favourite hunting lodge was East Hampstead Park. Uh, he has other hunting lodges locally, such as Warfield Park as well, and there's a few other hunting lodges floating around uh, in the Bracknell area, which are mostly either ruined or lost to history, but he had several smaller sub-lodges that were supported at East Hampstead Park, where members of his retinue would have possibly stayed if East Hampstead Park was full, such as lower nobles and servants. Um, and also, if there was bad weather, they could shelter, or they could stay a night in one and spend most of the time in the other. Catherine of Aragon was actually banished to this area, not just East Hampstead Park, but several stately homes and hunting lodges and, and properties in the area during the last six months of their messy divorce, which is where Henry VIII breaks from the Catholic Church and sets up the Church of England. Not the Church of England as we know it now, but the forebear of it, which will then begin about 200 odd years of religious warfare, uh, not just here in England, but also in Scotland, Wales, Ireland, and in Europe. The starting point of the Wars of Religion starts here. Very crucial. There's already a conflict in Germany, in the Holy Roman Empire, but the conflict in England starts here. Long after Henry dies, a lot of the royal lands do get sold off, but there's still a link with the royal family locally, not a few miles away with Windsor Grey Park, Swinley Forest, which is right on the edge of Bracknell Forest, as in the local area, and Ascot Racecourse for Royal Ascot. There's still a big link with the royal family today, but nowhere near as strong as it was in Henry VIII's time. As time goes on, land gets sold off. So places like Southall Park, which is a very important manor house and arts centre with a theatre and a cinema and parkland around it, it was built in 1760. That wouldn't have been allowed um, under Henry VIII. You would have to pay a large amount of money to be allowed to have a, a property on rural land, pay a large sum of cash. That's built because the raw land is getting sold off year by year. More and more raw lands are getting sold off for, for money, basically, because the raw, with the Civil War and things like that, the, the raw family are getting a bit skint. Um, but Oscar Wilde stays there and he writes the importance of being earnest. And apparently Lady Bracknell is inspired by this story. And this is alleged that he stayed there. It's sort of known that he stayed there for a period of time. Whether he wrote the importance of being earnest while there or was inspired to write it because of his stay there, we may never know. But Oscar Wilde is linked to the area. Another guy, Alexander Pope, another famous um, social, literary and art figure of the era. A bit before Oscar Wilde, he, he actually technically was born and raised in Binfield. And his uh, patrons were the Turnbull family, who are a very, very important family in the local history and the local, um, the local area themselves. He died um, not too far from here. And now in an area of Bracknell, or Popeswood, is named after Alexander Pope. And we'll do a video on Alexander Pope and I'll go into his life, his tragic life. It's a very short tragic life, but he's very important for social history. Dick Turpin is alleged to have also done some higher robberies and hidden out the Hines Head pub, which is now Bratton Working College. Um, this is more myth than fact. Uh, he is known to have robbed around Hampstead Heath, which is North London. It's highly unlikely, but plausible, he could have uh, done his, some of his highway home and antics west of London, but more unlikely there were other gangs in the area that may not have tolerated someone like Dick Turpin coming into their area. And there were laws of, par acts of parliament due to pay people like Dick Turpin that were enacted because of the lawlessness, lawlessness at night on the roads in England with the highwaymen and footpads. So we'll get back to Dick Turpin later on as well. 
Uh, the RAF Staff College used to be based here as well until about 15, 20 years ago. Uh, it was fully decommissioned in the early 2000s, but the RAF had actually moved all their vital paperwork out by the late 90s. Um, that is now a housing estate. And many films have been shot here, including the Harry Potter series, Buddy Song, The Offence, starring Sean Connery, and Villain, starring Richard Burton. Um, so, if you have any interest in any of those films, check them out, have a watch of them. Now, the main bit of the history is when the new town is selected. Now, the new town covers East Hampstead, Ramslade, and Bracknell, and bits of Warfield, which is where I used to live. 1949, Bracknell was chosen as the site for one of the new towns outside of London and Birmingham to be built. Overspilled, there's a lot of damage due to bombing, a lot of homelessness, and a lot of people um, can't return to their homes after the war. And it's part of the social ho housing programme of the Labour government at the time under Clement Attlee. White Waltham and Bracknell both applied to be new towns because of the economic advantages that would come with industry, population boom uh, and wealth and investment. The reason why Bracknell gets over White Waltham, we had a train station and a railway line uh, that had been in use for a, a long, long time on uh, the Reading to London line and we were chosen as a new town and that led to a massive expanse of growth from a village of a, a small little village, a small little town of about four or five thousand people. Um, at the max, that includes all the boroughs, well, all the, the parishes around, um, that includes East Amsterdam, Ramslade, to a, a town today of nearly 80,000 people. New Bracknell Forest itself, about 120,000 people. It's approximate because we're going by the last census, which was quite some time ago. Um, lots of building going on, uh, lots of expansion. So where the villain was filled used to be a country lanes, that is now a housing estate. Where the offence was done, some of those scenes have been redeveloped. Uh, Harry Potter that was built in one of the, that was filmed in one of the near estates that were built in the 90s. Um, Buddy Song, I think that some of the scenes were, were shot there. There, all that has changed. But because of the new town expansion, now the Bracknell Town Football Club was here from 1896. They're called the Robins. They played their entire existence in the non-league. Two of the sports teams that are in the town today that are still going come after the new town. The Bracknell Bees ice hockey team. In 1987, a couple of years before I was born, and Bracknell Rubber Club. I used to play for them. They were established in 1955, and a, a very young Lewis Moody used to play youth rugby at youth level for Bracknell Rubber Club in the early 90s. Oh yeah. But with the links to London, the links to the royal family are still strong today. Um, many of the local businesses have been linked to government contracts, such as BAE Systems, actually to be Sferi Gyroscope based down the road, Waitrose head office, based down the road. Um, the, the old Lawrence Brick Works used to be based down my street uh, until the late 80s, early 90s, is now a housing estate. Uh, they built, they made the bricks for 10 Downing Street and the other buildings in Downing Street for repairs. Yep. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of interest around here, but the biggest part of history is Henry VIII, Catherine of Aragon. That is a turning point in European history and world history, that divorce. And the last six months, so half the divorce proceedings, she is banished to this very town. At the time, it was rural and it was under a, it was a royal estate. But because of that divorce, well, religion has a shift in, in Christianity. And this leads to Puritanism uh, and colonisation of North America, amongst other things. And some very, very brutal warfare in Europe, both here in the UK and Ireland and on the continent which will go on and on and on and still have some political ramifications to this day. But yeah, Henry VIII and Catherine Aragon, very, very important figures of history. And uh, the Bracknell area played a big part in that history. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Place your comments below. And I'll have some more videos for you soon.